It is impossible to exaggerate the magnitude of the problem that Darwin and Wallace solved. I could mention the anatomy, cellular structure, biochemistry and behavior of literally any living organism by example. But the most striking feats of apparent design are those picked out, for obvious reasons, by creationist authors, and it is with gentle irony that I derive mine from a creationist book. Life, How Did It Get Here? has no named author but is published by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society in 60 languages and 11 million copies. It is obviously a firm favorite because no fewer than six copies have been sent to me as unsolicited gifts by well-wishers from around the world. Picking a page at random from this anonymous and lavishly distributed work, we find the sponge known as Venus's flower basket, Euplectella, accompanied by a quotation from Sir David Attenborough, no less. When you look at a complex sponge skeleton, such as that made of silica spicules, which is known as Venus's flower basket, the imagination is baffled. How could quasi-independent microscopic cells collaborate to secrete a million glassy splinters and construct such an intricate and beautiful lattice? We do not know. The Watchtower authors lose no time in adding their own punchline. But one thing we do know, chance is not the likely designer. No, indeed, chance is not the likely designer. That is one thing on which we can all agree. The statistical improbability of phenomena such as Euplectella's skeleton is the central problem that any theory of life must solve. The greater the statistical improbability, the less plausible is chance as a solution. That is what improbable means. But the candidate solutions to the riddle of improbability are not, as is falsely implied, design and chance. They are design and natural selection. Chance is not a solution given the high levels of improbability we see in living organisms, and no sane biologist ever suggested that it was. Design is not a real solution either, as we shall see later, but for the moment I want to continue demonstrating the problem that any theory of life must solve, the problem of how to escape from chance. Turning Watchtower's page, we find the wonderful plant known as Dutchman's Pipe, Aristolochia trilobata, all of whose parts seem elegantly designed to trap insects, cover them with pollen, and send them on their way to another Dutchman's pipe. The intricate elegance of the flower moves Watchtower to ask, Did all of this happen by chance, or did it happen by intelligent design? Once again, no, of course it didn't happen by chance. Once again, intelligent design is not the proper alternative to chance. Natural selection is not only a parsimonious, plausible and elegant solution, it is the only workable alternative to chance that has ever been suggested. Intelligent design suffers from exactly the same objection as chance. It is simply not a plausible solution to the riddle of statistical improbability. And the higher the improbability, the more implausible intelligent design becomes. Seen clearly, intelligent design will turn out to be a redoubling of the problem. Once again, this is because the designer himself, herself, itself, immediately raises the bigger problem of his own origin. Any entity capable of intelligently designing something as improbable as a Dutchman's pipe, or a universe, would have to be even more improbable than a Dutchman's pipe. Far from terminating the vicious regress, God aggravates it with a vengeance. Turn another Watchtower page for an eloquent account of the giant redwood, Sequoia dendron giganteum, a tree for which I have a special affection because I have one in my garden, a mere baby scarcely more than a century old, but still the tallest tree in the neighborhood. A puny man standing at a sequoia's base can only gaze upward in silent awe at its massive grandeur. Does it make sense to believe that the shaping of this majestic giant and of the tiny seed that packages it was not by design? Yet again, if you think the only alternative to design is chance, then no, it does not make sense. But again, the authors omit all mention of the real alternative, natural selection, either because they genuinely don't understand it, or because they don't want to. The process by which plants, whether tiny pimpernels or massive wellingtonias, acquire the energy to build themselves is photosynthesis. Watchtower again. There are about 70 separate chemical reactions involved in photosynthesis. 
one biologist said. It is truly a miraculous event. Green plants have been called nature's factories, beautiful, quiet, non-polluting, producing oxygen, recycling water and feeding the world. Did they just happen by chance? Is that truly believable? No, it is not believable, but the repetition of example after example gets us nowhere. Creationist logic is always the same. Some natural phenomenon is too statistically improbable, too complex, too beautiful, too awe-inspiring to have come into existence by chance. Design is the only alternative to chance that the authors can imagine. Therefore, a designer must have done it. And science's answer to this faulty logic is also always the same. Design is not the only alternative to chance. Natural selection is a better alternative. Indeed, design is not a real alternative at all, because it raises an even bigger problem than it solves. Who designed the designer? Chance and design both fail as solutions to the problem of statistical improbability, because one of them is the problem and the other one regresses to it. Natural selection is a real solution. It is the only workable solution that has ever been suggested. And it is not only a workable solution, it is a solution of stunning elegance and power.